All right, YouTube. <gasps> There's a dog. Dingo baby. Hi. Good to have dog. All right, let's talk uh, things I hate about care optics. The worst part is it's a gear race. I've shot production for so long, I just switched to carry optics because there's no competition in production, and this is the biggest division, so. Started doing this this year, 2024. 20, the Canics come with these plus two base pads. This is a flawless magazine. I've never had issues out of it. And the teardown is basically the best in the industry. I've never seen a magazine come down this easy ever. So this is a brand new mag that I got with, I bought a, basically a brand new tungsten Canic from a buddy because he just didn't want it. And you can see this magazine is a mile long, or the magazine spring rather, so I can't measure it with a caliper hardly. So on the top of the follower, all the way down 180 millimeters plus whatever this last bit is, which is 40, so 220. I'll go get a tape measure because. I guess I didn't anticipate needing Mondo calipers for this. All right, let's try this again. Only in American units this time. So the top of the follower down to the spring. It is just over nine inches, nine inches in the 16th, nine inches in the eighth. And just looking at the construction of the spring, it's got the captive keeper. It's got a rolled bottom, so you know this is for the canics. And this is a brand new spring, so the springs we're looking at are probably yielded pretty bad. And then if we just go from the um, first coil, so we have a reference point for the other ones, it's more like eight and a half inches. So stock tube, stock base pad, this meets 138 millimeters, I would imagine. From ass to stern. Oh my god. Come on. Work with me here. Oh, look at that. 137. So 141 and a quarter is what you get. Which is basically a little bit more than what these Taylor Freelancers give you. These Taylor Freelancers are actually kind of short. Ass to stern. Oh, I gotta measure this way. It's more like 140. So these, I've had them gauged at national, so I know these work. And you'd think a manufacturer wouldn't sell these if they didn't work, but my favorite company, Sig Sauer, I know a lot of people with Sig Sauer Nats two years ago, they got disqualified because their mags didn't fit. Mainly because the mag tubes were too long, not the actual base pad sold by companies. But this is a Taylor Freelance. It has a Rune Tactical spring and faller in it. You can see it used to be in this tube, right, Rune Tactical spring. But I thought the tube was bad, so I changed the tube out. It turns out it's the spring and follower. It was weird. The first 500 rounds, I was having failures to feed like mad out of the first four rounds. And it wasn't always the first round. Usually, because of the stack up of the mag pressure, the first round it strips off, especially if you Barney up. So you grab this magazine off your pouch, strip a round off, chamber it, put that back in, insert a full magazine, these give you 23 rounds plus the one you can start with 24 rounds. Um, normally it's the first round after the first round fired since the, all that excess mag pressure. This giant spring is compressed in this itty bitty space down here. Um, usually that's what fails, but this is intermittent. It's not a mag spring overpressure incident. It's the first four or five there were issues. Um, definitely didn't like running when I put major in these, that's for sure. But uh, anyway... Uh, yeah, it ran poorly for the first 500 rounds, the next 3,000. It ran almost flawlessly. I only had one or two malfunctions. And then this last um, match I shot both the Taylor Freelance with this rune and the one with this stock Canic follower that I'll show you that I just cut also gets 23 plus 1. If you just throw this on here, you only get 22 with the standard follower. Um, both of these had problems, so I basically said this is either a Taylor Freelance problem or a spring rate problem that I just happen to have on both magazines, which we're going to take them apart now. I hate these magazines. I have to use a, well, that's a little wiggly. That one's actually really tight. I don't think that's the root of the problem, but it could be. 
But you can see the Taylor Freelances, there's a set screw that pushes up against the back of the magazine body. That's what secures them, depending on how worn your magazines, they might rattle. Usually, I, again, like I said, this one never gave me problems out of box. Like, with this cut follower, never had any problems until recently. So, um, and I clean these before every match, so it wasn't because they're dirty. A lot of stuff going on here. If you're new to USPSA, this is probably not something you want to go after. If Basically, I would just say run the 18 round mags and figure out how to stage plan better. This, all this gear nonsense, gear doesn't make you better. This will just help you on the two of the maybe four stages that you might need out of the 12 round national, 12 stage nationals will make you shoot better. Um, if you're not podium, stop buying gear, just train. That's all I gotta say about that. Like I said, these, you can cut the spring on these and get 21 total. So I would highly suggest you stick with these stock magazines because they've never failed me. <clears throat> anyway, I hate these base pads to take them apart and clean because they are neither a 532nd nor are they a 2.5 millimeter. The 2s are too small, the 3s are way too big. Same thing with this. The 332nd is way too big, the 1 or the 116th is way too small. Or the 564th is way too small. So... The sizing on these are completely fucked, so I always have this in my range bag. I just use a Torx and shove it in there. So I don't know what the hell Taylor Freelance did with this size, but it is completely crap. To the point that I gotta shove a Torx in here to get this to unscrew. As you can see, the Torx works just fine. I imagine this is probably a T15. Yeah, it's a T15. You can see the one missing there. T15. So you just unscrew this until it does the dirty. This is a Promag spring, it looks like. Um, this is, it looks identical. If I had a Promag spring, I'd go grab it. But this is the Rune Tactical spring. You can see it is much, much, much shorter. I don't have a new one to reference. Maybe Taylor, or Rune Tactical can comment on this video because I've already contacted them. Well, I, I, I contacted them before, but I never got any response, but I tagged them on Instagram and, you know, everybody and their brothers on Instagram rotting their brains, so they responded to that. You can see the first coil on this one is nested, whereas on the Canix, you have like four or five nested springs. So this actually has the potential to be a really good spring because that will nest inside of the coils and hold more rounds, potentially. But you've got two nested coils here. This one's got like five or six. You can see it's definitely a different size. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight coils and two nested. The Canic is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Regular and one, two, three, four, five, six nested. So I would imagine this probably comes about this length, but we had it at about that length. Well, a little bit. I should have measured that before. I'm not smart. But this is 172, 170, we'll say, relaxed. And if I stretch it, it's about 180. So maybe that was it. I'll go try it at the range tomorrow. I doubt it. But you can see the follower is nothing more than a very, very flat carbon fiber reinforced 3D printed piece. And as you can see, I tried out my own, car or my own 3D printed ones. I kind of added that little bullet ridge that typical followers had because I didn't know what I was doing. I was just trying it out. And these worked fine until he got down to the last round and this follower didn't sit right when it came up to the very top. You can see it kind of sits proud. Whereas this one in the Rune Tactical, when it comes up, it does not sit proud of the feed lips. So it doesn't bind when it gets to the top, which is just a matter of figuring out the geometry. Like I said, I was just playing around having fun. But you can see this is probably a wolf spring with a gauge thickness of 1.35 millimeters or 555 thousandths of an inch. And the stock Canic spring is probably smaller gauge. So yeah, that's 48 thousandths of an inch or about one and a quarter millimeters. So that's where you get the extra stiffness from the shorter spring is the heavier gauge. But as you can see, maybe if you look hard enough this spring is already starting to twist and this is buckled up here from use. 
So these are wear items. I would imagine they need to be replaced every season. So at the end of every year, I would probably replace the mag springs. But this one didn't even make it half a season. Like it died on me in July and I don't start shooting until February. So there's that. And then I'll show you the follower that I cut so you can compare it to the stock. Get my Torx bit for my, you can clearly see this is an Allen head, not a Torx. Maybe. So that's cool. The little wrench that it came with has since evaporated into existence. So this one looks like I used to have this marked with paint pen. I have no idea what spring this is. This is probably a Canic spring. It's got two nested. Either Canic or Promag, and this one's definitely twisted. But I used to know what spring it was. Yeah, I can't tell what they... They used to have paint pen on them, but I stopped carrying when I realized that the springs really don't matter. But you can see this is not the 20-round stock spring. This one should be stock Canic guts that I just threw a base pad on. So... The stock Canic spring has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven regular coils and one, two, three, four, five nested coils. And Taylor Freelance has the plus zero base pads for us production nerds. You can see that's a production or a stock follower. And this is just a 3D printed pad that you throw down and capture it as such. So this is probably a Promag spring or a Wolf spring that I purchased. But you can see, all I did for this one to get the same capacity out of the rune was cut the center locating bit off of the follower. And I ground that down and I cut the legs off. And this thing never gave me problems until this last match either. So, the length of this spring... is approximately 168 millimeters and you can see it is kind of foobarred so I imagine it's probably a pro mag spring if I stretch it out a little bit which I would never stretch it more than that probably gain 10 millimeters yeah so that's 178 79 millimeters now so Dingo are you helping? oh tripod scary not a great guard dog that's why I have guns anyway so those are the two setups that failed me. Now, the thing to note about this is the springs, obviously when this is compresses, let's see if I can manhandle this, all this spring has to fit down into this base pad, essentially. And you can kind of see that that nestles in there pretty well. There's plenty of room on either side, but if that spring comes in coiled wrong, it might be able to catch on the lip of the magazine or the base pad, but there's really no place for it to grab. That was my initial concern, but this groove is filled up by the magazine, and the only thing that could get it to catch is if this rocks back and forth, which is what the set screw is supposed to prohibit. So that's completely tight. I can't tighten the set screw anymore. And that's not a great fit. Maybe the tube's worn out. You never know. So I'm going to change this out with the new tube that I took off of that guy and see if it rattles. Because steel is harder than brass. So this, over time, if you drop it too many times, especially if you shoot indoors, I imagine it probably wear out a little bit. So take this off. The old tube, which this tube, this tube's got countless fucking rounds through it. You can see the wear marks. You see the wear marks where it's been rattling. So, that might be a problem. And this is a, I think this is a Metgar, yeah, this is the old Metgar mags. When Metgar was making magazines for Canic, this should be a brand new Canic mag. Nope. This is still an SFX, so it's, my buddy's SFX must have been older, so it's still a Metgar mag. I don't know if I have mechanic mags on the table here. That's a Metgar. These are my production mags, so they're probably Metgar. 
there's a canning bag. So that's probably from a newer purchase. Come on, focus, you fuck. There we go. There's a Canic logo right there. So that was probably a newer purchase of mine within the last three years. And here's the aluminum Taylor Freelance. That thing is not moving at all. So I might have to try those instead of the brass ones. But if I throw this on the brand new magazine and I tighten it up. Oh boy. That's a little bit tighter. So this is the crap that I don't like. When I shot production division, all I had to do was show up with my stock canic and some 10 round, well now 15 unfortunately, 10 round magazines and I just, I, I shot the match. Like I didn't have to deal with any of this gear crap. So there's the worn out magazine. We'll take one of my old production mags that's probably worn out. Let's see if it does it. Let's see it's got a bit of a wear line. Lots of dry fire on these magazines. So the magazines do wear, apparently, the more you know. So production magazine, 2295, 2298, 2297, 2298. The magazine that it originally had on the base pad, you can see the big wear mark, 2295. 2299, 2298, 23, 2295, brand new magazine from Metgar, 23, 2299, so really not a big difference there, the front to back might be a problem, 3185, 86, yeah there it is, so that's 3170, 3170. So 0.1 millimeters doesn't sound like a lot, but basically it wearing that little bit is where we're getting the rattle. 3175, 3170, 3172. This is what, 3180? A little bit over 3180. That's the only difference. That must be where we're getting the rattle, because I figured it was the stamp steel wings, that seat in the side of this that was causing it, but it's actually the front to back. Ideally, you'd have a set screw that would push against the back of it instead of up so that you could tighten it up over time, but oh well. When that costs as much as that, you'd expect a little bit more, I guess. I don't know. So there's all that. Solution. Uh, change carry optics to be IPSC um, production optics and have 15 round magazines and stop making this a gear race, but Obviously, USPSA and all of their squanderings and backdoor deals with X amount of companies, you want aftermarket parts. They want what they can get out of their sponsorships. So you have a gear race, which is what open is supposed to be. But here's the Canic, basically my production gun, which is uh, just a stock Canic with a Freedom Smith trigger. And I put the Springco recoil reduction system in it. Helps a little bit and stock everything else and I put the Taylor Freelance brass backstrap in it doesn't really make a difference I did shoot this with a light on the front it actually made the gun shoot worse in my opinion I like the gun to return fast I like fast follow up shots and I don't like waiting on the dot so there's that but yeah this is the gear race and I absolutely despise it I like showing up with a gun with cheap 124 BS reloads that I can make for 16 cents around and just shooting a match. So, there you go. Um, the only other thing I'm going to do tonight is I did purchase Henning's base pad, and I believe this has an MBX spring and follower. They have it marketed for the rival steel frame, which it takes the same magazine, so I don't know why they did that. Maybe it doesn't fit in the grip, who knows? We'll find out. And this one, 
Looks it's like it's just a spring detent. So how does this fit on the worn magazine? That's the question. Backwards. What the hell? I am not smart enough to operate this tool apparently. There we go. Duh. So that's looser than all get out. That is a cute detent. I'll be surprised if that holds up. And then the brand new magazine. Still much, much looser. So just to give this a fighting chance, I'm going to use this new mag tube. And then the MBX. Same thing. I don't, this doesn't look carbon fiber reinforced. It looks like they have a uniform mic in the follower. But this one's got the little notch for the mag. Uh, uh, last round, hold open. So, observe that spring of a thing. It is 185 millimeters long. 190 millimeters long, or for the American folk, a little, a little over eight inches. Let's see how this goes on here. Got the brand new spring with thing. Obviously, it does tighten up a little bit with the spring in it, but does this really lock the slide open? Because if it does, that'd be pretty baller. Yeah, so that's that's why it's for the steel frame. I'll probably just dremel these ears off. I don't know why those ears are on it. I didn't see an option for the regular Canix, so yeah. Yep, that's cockapoopoo. However, this does give me a spring to play with. If I really hated this gun, I would just dremel the grips out, but I really don't want to do that. So, if I ever get a rival steel frame, then I got a magnet for it. See how much this holds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That's the most capacity I've ever seen for the Canics. Yeah, that's 24. And 141.50, so it might fit in the gauge. I don't know. And then the other thing is obviously that's not going to work with this gun because. A steel frame. Oh. Wow. I don't have to dremel that much. That's pretty neat. To chamber the first round. Wow, it does. That's pretty cool. And then. Round hold open does not work. So that was marketed. Um, does drop free, which I kind of like these bumpers being high because with an empty magazine, it has an extra pressure to shoot the mag out. So I might just use this and see how it works. As you can see, it doesn't really work until I smack it. It's just a little bit of pressure against the bottom there. Hmm, that's cool. Pew! So there's that. Oh, Henning, maybe it'll work. Having 25 rounds in the gun at the beginning is the most I've ever heard of for any gun in the competition. One, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23, and the rune, you can see it, it starts to accept the 24th round. Maybe with an Upalula that would go. But I usually don't use Upalulas because I'm a man. Yeah, the 24th round wants to go. So maybe if I cut the spring, it would work. But as of right now, this mag doesn't run. So wouldn't do that. So there are some other options out there for the Canics. I have several thousand rounds on the Taylor Freelances. They don't work great, no matter what spring and follower. Uh, after a period of time. Don't know why that is. Like I said, for probably 3,000 rounds, they ran great. But the Rune Tactical Follower especially, were out of box, it just it did not work. I can't remember if I did a video on that or not. And then the other thing I wanted to see was what the coil set up, the spring to the MBX is. The other thing about these is, taking them apart, you're just destroying the bottom of that spring because you're yielding them in the wrong direction which this is already canted off to one side after loading it once. So every time you push a spring, all these, um, the circular cross sections are torsioning. So eventually this is going to kick off to one side and this one did after one loading. So what's the overall length after one loading? That's a good question. Wow. Way shorter one loading and it's 10, 15 millimeters shorter. It's only 167. So, that's a lot. And then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight coils, one half a coil, and one nested coil. So, this must be something you got to take out and stretch every time. So, and then the cross section of the circular spring is like the rune tactical, it's 1.3 to 1.4. Yeah, this one's 1.4. I think the rune was 1.35. Yeah, so there you go. More knowledge than you could ever fathom from a magazine video. I have looked. There's not a whole lot of information on Canics, which is crazy considering how many people shoot them and carry optics now. The steel frames are not reliable. Would not recommend them. The radius on the inside of the frame here is not relieved enough for the mag lug to catch on this side of the magazine and they drop free a lot um, which I saw with shooting major ammo in the plastic frame but that's just because the uh, aluminum mag release here is not made for <laughs> all that recoil I suppose so that's sheared off but there you go lots of information on the Canics it's the most reliable best performing out of box handgun ever made there's no doubt about that uh, and they're five six hundred dollars so you don't need a rival. You don't need a steel frame. Go buy a cheap SFX. Run the piss out of it. Have some fun. And uh, if you have better um, feedback on what mag extensions you use, definitely let me know because this is very frustrating. I don't like not performing because of my gear, which, of course, as you can see, is why I have a Trigicon on this because all the other optics companies really suck. Looking at you, Sig Sauer and Vortex. So... I change the battery out once a year. It's never lost zero. It's never died on me. Um, and as you can see, I don't always take care of my shit. So, carry out this. Yay. Thanks for watching. Don't ride the side home.